Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Does Jesus deserve a worship and praise? Is he the king? Why don't we worship him like he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody recognize him as the king. Hallelujah. Somebody applaud him like you're standing in his presence. Hallelujah. Does anybody know that in his presence there is fullness of joy? And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Don't look so glum, chum. Hallelujah. He's my Lord. He's my God. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them to notify their face that they're a one God tongue talking apostolic Holy Ghost. Holiness loving Christian. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> My Lord, I just feel like something good's about to happen. I feel like there's an earthquake fault running right through downtown Stockton. Hallelujah. There's a sound of abundance of rain. Somehow. Ha <laughs> ha. I believe it's happening right now. Hallelujah. And somebody do a little leaping for joy? Hallelujah. Has God did something for you today? Hallelujah. Is the world going to hear about what you got? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Haney. Talk about a visionary. Amen. Brother Haney is the man. And I appreciate and love him so much. Amen. And uh, appreciate his leadership. He's easy to be entreated, but he's no wimpy little guy. He's a strong man. Amen. In love with God and with his vision. And we appreciate everything that's being done here and around the world as a result of this great church and ministry. Amen. Brother Seagraves, thank you so much for all you do. Amen. In this conference, everybody's taken care of so well, and we, uh, we're enjoying ourselves. And all the brethren and the ministering brethren, Brother Randy Keyes, who is to follow me, someone that I love and appreciate so much. Amen. And all of the dignitaries, Brother Jerry Richardson, my friend, regional director from Africa, went to Bible school together 113 years ago. Amen. Brother Joe Farino, newly appointed Home Mission Secretary for United Pentecostal Church, my friend. Amen. All of our friends. Amen. Isn't this a wonderful family? The family of God. Hallelujah. I have not come tonight to preach. 88 reasons why the Lord is coming in 88 because that was 12 years ago and we're still here I have not come tonight to preach that you better head for the hills because we're going to be sunk by two zeros computers that can't read two zeros at the end of the year amen I know a lot of people that did a whole lot of stuff Amen. Armed camps. Praise God. Have you got your gun yet? What are you going to do with that? Uh, we didn't get much into that. I have not come to preach. The planets are lining up. We better all get scared to death because something bad's going to happen. There one woman came to me just before service one day in the Philippines and she looked at me and she said, Brother Mallory, you're going to have to warn the people there's an earthquake coming on Wednesday. It's going to be a devastating earthquake. It's going to kill many people. You've got to warn them that, they got, that we're going to be safe in the mountain. I said, I'm not going to do that. She said, but the Lord told me to tell you that there's going to be a devastating earthquake that's coming Wednesday. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. And I didn't do it. You know, I could have got up and got her spirit. 
I could have got up and shaking with fear, saying, the Lord has spoken to our dear sister here, and he told her to tell me to tell you that there's going to be a devastating earthquake this coming Wednesday. Go home and get your can of beans and let's hand for the hills with a cup of our help. I would have looked like a big fool. A lot of people have. I'm going to tell you something. I have not come to preach any of those things tonight. And I have not come to preach some masterpiece, but I've got a burden in my heart. Amen. John, chapter 15 and verse 13. Greater love. Everybody say, greater love. How many of you think you have the love of God in your heart? You don't all speak at once. How many of you got any enemies? How many got anybody you don't love? Can I see your hand? You got somebody you don't love. <laughs> hmm. Everybody say, greater love. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. I am convinced that something has got to happen to us tonight. I'm not here to throw stones at anybody. I'm here to preach to myself as well as to you. But I believe that if we could ever get a true understanding of what real love is all about, hallelujah. I believe that we could really evangelize the world in short order. If we could somehow get our priorities right. Praise God. Now, I would like you to put your Bible down, and I'd like you to pray earnestly right now that the Lord would speak to us in the next few minutes. I want to be respectful of the time and of the next speaker. Hallelujah. But I want God to work on us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear you pray, okay? Hallelujah. Come on. Can I hear a burden coming out of somebody's mouth? Can I hear something coming out of somebody's heart? My God, I want to know what greater love is all about. My God, I want you to give me a vision for the lost like I've never had a vision for the lost. Hallelujah. I want to understand, Lord. Hallelujah. That you have no hands but mine. You have no feet but mine. You have no mouth but mine. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Would you let the Lord do it? Would it be possible tonight that spiritual conception would take place? That something would be birthed in this house? Hallelujah. My God, could we birth? Could we actually birth an end time apostolic revival on the street that we live on? In the city that we come from? My God. Hallelujah. Give me a burden, Lord, I pray. Do something. Work on my heart. Hallelujah. Give me a greater understanding of love. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Two brothers. Tommy and Timmy Webster, ages 8 and 11, played around the railroad tracks in Canton, Ohio, on their way home from school every day. These kids, they'd like to see who could walk on top of the tracks the furthest without falling off. They'd run as fast as they could, skipping one rail tie with every stride until one would miss and trip. They'd fall and they'd laugh. One day as they were walking on top of the tracks, they heard the familiar sound of the 420 train coming down the tracks. They began to run ahead as they had so many times before when all of a sudden, little Timmy's foot slipped off the rail. It got wedged in the track switching mechanism. He tried to get it out, but it was stuck between the two steel rails. The train is bearing down on them now, closer, closer approaching at about 50 miles per hour. Tommy turned and ran back to his little brother, immediately began trying to free Timmy's little foot from the track. Both were trying frantically, but the foot was stuck and it wouldn't come loose. 
Timmy, just eight years old, looked into the face of his scared older brother and said, You better get off the track, Tommy. The 420's coming. With the train now only about 50 yards away, instead of running off the track, Tommy looked into the face of his frightened little brother, then at the approaching train, then back at his brother. Then he threw himself on top of Timmy, shielding himself from the train. Both boys were killed the instant that that massive locomotive ran over them. An intuitive and sensitive newspaper writer reporting on the death of Tommy and Timmy the next day, ages 8 and 11, wrote these words. Two brothers ran over by the 420 train. One was caught by the foot. The other was caught by the heart. Something has got to happen to us as apostolics tonight. We have got to ask the Lord, our Heavenly Father, our Creator, our Redeemer, the one that bought us with his own blood. We have got to sincerely ask the Lord to perform a little surgery on our hearts tonight. Hallelujah. We have got to say, God, I want you to look at my heart. I want to see where I stand. I want to know, hallelujah, where my heart is. My God, we're going to go out of this place with a burden like we've never had a burden. With a heart like we've never had a heart. Would somebody in this place, hallelujah, say, I want to be caught by the heart. Hallelujah. Now we can give some applause. Hallelujah. Because we're saying by doing that, God, I want it. It's high time, past time, I believe, for us to allow a burden for the lost world to catch us by the heart. It's time that we allow the passion for the lost that throbs in the heart of our Lord to grip our hearts also. It's time that we find an altar, hallelujah, where we can pray until the floor is wet with our tears as we agonize over a lost and a dying world. And then when we stand up, the burden that's in our hearts drives us to evangelize a lost and a dying world. Hallelujah. We love to sing about revival. We love to hear preaching about revival. Amen. But I believe it's time for everybody in this room to realign our priorities. What is our purpose for existing? Every living thing reproduces after its own kind. True or false? And if they're not reproducing, they soon die and become extinct. My God, this church is not going to become extinct. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church is predestined. I'm here to tell you I want to be a part of it. Hallelujah. I want something to happen inside me tonight. I want to go out of this place expecting. I'm going to expect a spiritual baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing else matters but lost souls. Hallelujah. Can somebody catch the burden? Can somebody get their heart right? <laughs> Are we moved to compassion because of the masses of lost humanity who are on their way to a devil's hell? How many times we've heard it? Amen. We can preach about it and some people yawn while you preach it. But these people are without hope, without God, in all the world, all alone. Has it been too long since we spent the night at the church praying for the lost of our city? Has it been too long since we really wept over men and women who are lost? Has it been too long since we were moved to compassion for those around us who are not ready to be God? Can we be flippant about it? Or can we ask God 
to do something in our hearts tonight to, to make a difference. Hallelujah. Let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. Say, God, I want to be moved with compassion. I want to be moved with compassion. I want my priorities right. My God, I want to go into this place expecting, expecting a miracle of your grace. My God, lead me to a hungry, lost soul. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You say, Brother Mallory, this is very elementary. I'm here to tell you this is the bottom line. Souls is the bottom line. If you come here expecting to hear some kind of a theological deal, which is fine, you come to the wrong place at this moment. God is going to give us a burden like we've never had a burden. We must allow the Spirit of God to change us. Not changing our standards and our doctrine and all of that, but changing us from a church that is too infrequently moved by the lost into a church that is overcome with a compassion for the lost, into a force of evangelism in our community, into a church that's driven What's it driven by? Driven by a burden. Into a church that is truly caught by the heart. Hallelujah. I'm so tired of hearing some people talk about revival someday. 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 Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Hallelujah. Come on, buddy. Look on the fields. They are white. Already to harvest. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Say, I want to have a compassion for the lost. Over the next horizon, beyond the next hill, around the next quarter, next year, next decade, next century, next millennium. No, this is our day. This is our day. This is the time of the harvest that we've all been waiting for. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Spiritual conception has got to take place. Birth! Come on, pray. Pray. Some of you just sitting there. My God, pray. At least lean forward and put your head on a rail and pray. Say, God, I got to have a burden. I got to get caught by the heart. Come on, pray. 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 There's lost people in this city. There's lost people in this nation. There's lost people in the world. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, every child of God under the sound of my voice needs to plug in to what god's doing everybody say plug in my god we gotta get connected we gotta keep connected to the source no sideliners no armchair quarterbacks no spectators everybody should be a participator in end time revival come on somebody say i'm a participator come on somebody ought to be out of your seat Somebody ought to be saying, it's me. <laughs> birth, birth, spiritual conception. It's got to take place. My God, I come against every spirit that would try to rob us of what you're doing at this moment. My God, all this preaching runs into each other. My God, it's anointed and wonderful, but something's got to happen. The bottom line has got to be seen. We got to go out of this place saying, oh, what a pretty message. No, souls, souls, souls. 
sells the bottom line it sells what am I contributing what am I contributing to end time revival in my local church what am I doing to make my church succeed what am I doing to help my church grow and remember it's a ministry total church evangelism total involvement this church must again embrace evangelism as its highest priority evangelism is the highest priority for a truly apostolic church i need somebody to be tearing up jack somebody ought to be shouting somebody ought to be praising god oh, give us a burden where's the tears we used to shed where's the tears where's the groanings where's the burden where's the heart oh, are we just interested in saving our own neck uh, and making our homes like armed camps because we're worried about dying in this life my god may god have mercy on us Come on, pray, 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 pray. Oh, gotta have a burden. Take me back, Lord. When I was a nine-year-old kid, when you first gave me a vision for the lost and the dying. Now I'm a 55-year-old man. Oh, I can't think of retirement. I gotta think about souls, 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 and six billion of them. My God. Hallelujah, come on, pray. Come on. You say we're not supposed to be doing that during the preaching. Come on. Let me hear you pray. Come on. Let the Lord hear it with groanings, groanings, groanings. Something's going to be birthed at Landmark 2000. We're going to start it off right. I'm going to win a soul. Evangelism is not an option for an apostolic church. Evangelism is not a phase that the church goes through. Evangelism isn't something that you can schedule on a three or five year go. Evangelism isn't something that you have a right to choose to do or not do. It's the main thing. Let the main thing be the main thing. Hallelujah. Somebody say the main thing. Somebody say the bottom line is souls. Somebody say, I want to be caught by the heart. Now give a loud praise to God and say, my heart is going to be right when I leave this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What is our purpose? What is our purpose? Everybody say, what is our purpose? Say it, what is our purpose? As a local church, as a section, as a district, as an organization. Why have we gathered here together tonight? What is our right to exist? Can we be content with our own singing and worship and fellowship? while the world's on its way to hell <laughs> somebody said we had the best service we ever had last sunday i'm convinced that what you and i may call our best services is not what god considers our best services the greatest thing that happens in our services is not the choir however beautiful they sing 
It's not the special singing. It's not the musicians. The greatest thing is not even the message that's preached. The greatest thing that happens, hallelujah, when we come together is when sinners repent and when people get baptized in Jesus' name and when they get filled with the Holy Ghost. My Bible tells me that all of heaven starts their partying. The angels in heaven rejoice over just one sinner that repents. Hallelujah. You want heaven to have a party? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Pray. 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 Hallelujah. Many of you have never been up here holding a microphone and all that. It's not really that all that great of a place to be, and I love it, and I love preaching, and I love all that kind of stuff. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes we come to meetings like this, and we've been to so many meetings, and they're wonderful, and they're all the above. And I'm not here to be negative in any way, shape, or form. Hallelujah, and I think you understand what I'm talking about. And even some of us as preachers, amen, we compare this and compare that. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How did he do? How did he do? Well, he did this, he did that. He said this, he said that. And I'm not here even knocking that. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm just saying, <laughs> hallelujah. The bottom line, amen, had evermore better be souls. And I'm not the only one that said it, and I understand that. <laughs> but I feel it so strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't have a big homiletical thing for you tonight. I just have a burden and a microphone in my hand. Hallelujah. Somebody has got to be caught by the heart. Somebody's got to go out of here this place believing that you can win a soul. Somebody's got to go out of this place believing that you are his child and that you are his instrument. Hallelujah. And that spiritual conception is taking place on the inside of you. My God, somebody has got to believe it. Come on. Come on. They're not going to get it without praying. Some of you just sitting there looking. Hallelujah. It's not looking time. It's getting burden time. Somebody said, Brother Mallory, why don't you preach a little bit humorous, like they're known for? I don't feel very funny right now. Hallelujah. I do have the joy of the Lord inside. Hallelujah. But somehow, I feel like something has got to happen. I feel something else. Somebody has left their first love. Somebody's just going through the motions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody stopped witnessing a long time ago. Amen. Some of you have become very comfortable within the four walls of your fellowship. Amen. Some of you aren't concerned about the lost like you used to be. Some of you are cold. Some of you are backslidden don't know it. Some of you need to get right with God. Some of you need to get fired up. Thank you for that rousing response. Somebody has got to get fired up. Somebody's got to understand again what the bottom line is. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Come on. A little praying. A little believing. Church is in the people business. When the trumpet sounds, the only thing that's going up, the only thing that's going to be raptured out of this earth is people. And if you don't love people, you're in trouble. When he comes, the piano's not going, the organ's not going. PA systems aren't going, buses aren't going, pews aren't going, chairs aren't going, buildings aren't going. Computers aren't going. TV.
TV, your dog's not going. Your parakeet's not going. I hate to disappoint you. You mean Bowser ain't gonna make it? No, sir. When the, the trumpet sounds, hallelujah, it's those that have been created in his image and his likeness, hallelujah, that have been redeemed by his precious blood, hallelujah, and have come through full New Testament salvation. Does anybody here know that you're on your way to heaven? My God, you ought to be having a party! Come on, somebody! Does anybody know that it's about party time? Come on, come on. Something's good at birth here. <laughs> Can you tell the devil where to get off? Can you tell those spirits to leave? Something is going to happen tonight! And when the tough gets going and the going gets tough and the tempter comes, that filial love can be turned into the grossest of hatred. Because filial love cannot stand alone. It cannot endure. That's why we have got to be baptized tonight if we're going to be caught by the heart with the agape divine love of God. Hallelujah. Now let me say this. When Paul said, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us, the word is agape. When Paul said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, the word is agape. I present to you that the world cannot love with agape love. But when you've got the Holy Ghost, you can love as God loves. Somebody needs to jump to your feet. Everybody, everybody stand to your feet. There's got to be a baptism of the divine love of God in this place. Come on, let's say, God, I want to go back to my first love. I want to go back to my first love. I want to go back to the altar where it happened. I want to go back to the place where I was talking in tongues. I want to go back to the place where you gave me the Holy Ghost. Come on, let the Holy Ghost hit us. Come on, can somebody talk in tongues like as of old? Can somebody say, God, I want to be baptized with the agape divine love of God. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Hallelujah! 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 Hey Amen. Would you do something for me right now? Amen. If you don't do it, it's all right. But would you just kind of put your hands on your head? We're going to begin to pray. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray, and you're going to pray. And all God's children are going to pray right now. Hallelujah. Come on, are you doing it? Lord, let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. I want a renewed mind. My God, I come against that home-wrecking devil. I come against that devil that's trying to get in between our marriage and our family. I come, I, I come against that spirit. Come on, are you praying with me? Are you praying with me? Are we going to go out of this place with a renewed mind? Hallelujah. Come on, come on. 
come on let's come against that spirit of bitterness if there's a spirit of bitterness that got into our heart my god we're going to pluck it out it's going to come out by the agape divine love of jesus christ my god we're not going to have a get even spirit we're going to go out of this place consumed with the mighty love of god come on keep your hand on your head say now you spirit of jealousy if there's even one smidgen of it it's got to go my god if there's a spirit of pride it's got to go i pray against that spirit of lust and that spirit of carnality in the name of jesus it's got to go it's got to go my god wash us pure and clean come on pray like you never prayed put it in the hands of god like you've never put it in the hands of god we're struggling we're struggling for the souls of men because the bottom line is so somebody go on your knees now and say this is it this is it this is it i bow myself i do it in the name of jesus we repent before you god if there's any wicked way in us create in me a clean heart oh god renew in me a right spirit cast me not away from thy presence i want to be caught by the heart go ahead go ahead go ahead come on look out world we're coming with compassion we're coming with purpose we're coming with our priorities right Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my God. My God, do it in us. My God, there's some people here that's unmoved and unchanged. Lord. Oh. oh. Everybody in the building ought to have a burden. Everybody on the building said, I gotta be changed by the heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I think it'd be good for us to visualize the lost and the undone coming to the Lord. Amen. It'd be all right for us to stand again to our feet and put our hands in the air and begin, hallelujah, to praise and to magnify the God, hallelujah, who's going to make it all possible. Let's hear some rejoicing now in the house. Hallelujah. Our hearts are changed. Our hearts are challenged. Hallelujah. We got a new direction. Come on. Hallelujah. Is it all right to get a party atmosphere? It's okay. Let's praise him. Let's magnify him. Let's have some rejoicing in the house. Come on. Let's shout with a voice of triumph. Come on. Everybody in the house. Come on. Join the angels. We can't take this kind of preaching lightly. This is a sovereign move of God. I've never heard Brother Mallory preach just like this. And I believe God was speaking to us tonight. If everybody in this building went to their respective areas, a soul winner burning with passion to see a soul saved. 